Hello, everybody, and thank you very much uh, for being here on another Thursday on Ask the Expert. Uh, this week, we are looking forward to next week when we are going to be celebrating Valentine's Day. It doesn't matter where in the world you are. Uh, I know that in New York is 1 p.m. because that is with that we set up. And you should celebrate Valentine, no matter, again, where in the world you are. It's a precious day to celebrate love and the love of our ancestors. So why not? Introductions uh, from the guy that love you all. My name is Daniel Horowitz. I have been dedicated to genealogy since 1980. Six And believe me, I do this because I love it. I have been involved in crowdsource digitization projects, transcription projects, and I volunteer my time to the Israel Genealogy Research Association. Since 2006, spreading the love for my heritage working and liaising with genealogy societies, bloggers and media, as well as lecturing in conferences around the world or just virtually as I am doing today. And today I'm gonna go straight into the research part of my heritage because I wanna go over marriage records. Now, you will notice that uh, we grow a little bit from the last time. Now, my heritage database is 16.4 billion historical records. And yes, that is our commitment. And we will keep growing our database on a weekly basis. If you're not sure what's new, just scroll down and you will see that the latest uh, records um, added here were the Russian cemetery records. And I know that is a tough country to get records from. So I'm very happy. France, of course, and Norway, we are already experts doing that. But Russia, that has to be a pleasure. Uh, Three million records released just a few uh, hours ago, I have to say. But let's go up because today it's all about love. Uh, so how I'm going to get to those records today? Very easy. Just by going into the categories that we have here, I'm going to select the one in the middle, birth, marriage, and death, or BMD, as we genealogy knows these records for. And this is just the main category. And we have here three types of records. We have birth, we have marriages, and we have death. And I am going to the side panel, and I'm going to look into marriages and divorce records. Yes, it's impossible to separate one from the other. And really, I would like that we will not have any divorces all over, but you know, as a genealogist, come on, it's an extra document that I have to research my ancestors. So I don't care if they divorce as long as they have made it that official with a document. Now, I cannot go any further on category here, but you can see on the side a list of the biggest collection that we have here. If you can uh, you can just scroll down and click show all, and that will show you 164 different categories that are related both to marriages and divorces. Some of them are exclusive marriages like uh, the German marriages, the England ones, or even the Mexico, uh, if you have some relatives over there. And I do know at least one person in the audience that has a lot of relationships over there. So maybe Virgilio will find records there. Now, others, as the Texas one, it's a combination of both 
marriages and divorces. But not only that, uh, we have Quebec, we have uh, different states in the US, we have France, Australia, Norway, Philippines, and all around the world. So it doesn't matter where your ancestors got married or divorced, we hope to have a file for you. So I'm going to be using the name that you already know I am more familiar with, uh, Jensen, but of course that I need to spell it right just to do a demo search here. I'm really not into this family. I really am not researching that last name, but hmm, new thing on my heritage. And this is definitely worthwhile to look at. Uh, the table results up here. Yes, I got it. And this will give me more results per inch or, or per space in my screen. I will be able to see uh, more results and analyze them. Not only that, but I will be able to see if this is a marriage, a divorce, the spouse, the relatives. And of course, one of the best things of marriage records is that you don't have one, you don't have two, you have actually six people mentioned in those records because you have the groom, you have the bride, and you have the parents of each of those. So that is two generations at least and six individuals over there. Now you will get more details if they are and a thumbnail of the record whenever we have such. Now, if you like the regular view, that it's fine as well. With me, I have no problem. Once you have all the results, you can of course go in deep into the different collections. Uh, and we have here just, again, the top ones. You can show uh, or see all the collections that we found information for, or you can just focus on one like the Denmark marriages. Why I love this one so much? Well, have you noticed the years? I really envy if you can find something over there. We're talking about 1635. My brick wall in my family stops at the late 1800. But if I find marriages here, you can very easily go up till the 1600s and a lot of generations over there. If you're not from Denmark, if this is not the collection you want, or if you look at everything and you couldn't find anything that you want, very easy. Just go and click again, marriages and divorces here. You will be brought back to wherever uh, you were here with all the collections, and then you can go into a new collection. You already know probably that to see the actual record, you can click on any area. I start to learn a little bit that I don't need to go to the view record, although sometimes I still go and look for the button. But even if I click here on the white area, that will open a new tab. So I didn't lose everything is right here. The new tab in my browser has the information, has the records. Not only that, you can see that MyHeritage is also finding you other records, not necessarily in the same collection, but across the whole 16.4 billion records for this individual. And like that, you will find yourself navigating into the different records that we have. Okay, so really, that is all what I have for you today. Um, I have to admit, and I will do that publicly, that I wanted to show you other stuff, uh, but I will only need to say, keep your eyes and ears wide open because by next week, as long that as at least that is what I was promised to, we're going to release more than 3 million new records to my heritage. In the meantime, I need to click here. 
And I will go into a few announcements. And the first one, more than announcement, is a scoop because nobody ever heard about this yet. And you're here the first ones too. And this is my Valentine's present to all of you. Yep, we are celebrating Valentine's Day. Well, it will be probably more like a Valentine's week, making all the marriage records available for free. So if you don't have a data plan or a complete plan, which are the uh, subscriptions that you will need in order to see the records, no worries. Just wait until February 13, and that is just this Sunday when all the marriage records are going to be open for free for everyone, and that will last a few days because, again, I know that there are about a couple of million records over there. Um, I think the count uh, was uh, 600. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to guess. I'm going to go to the collection catalog. I'm going to go down to the birth, marriage, and death categories. And because I'm very bad at a records, uh, at numbers, yeah, almost 600 million records that will be available for free. Okay, uh, back to my announcements then. Uh, if you are a newbie, if you just want to go over your knowledge on genealogy, or if you want to recommend anybody else, my heritage release, the introduction to genealogy course. This is totally free. A registration is needed, but just to keep track of your, uh, uh, like uh, the classes that you have seen, uh, but it's totally free. Where do you find this course? Very easy. You find it under education.myheritage.com and I placed in the chat all those URLs for you to copy and paste because it's part of the many free things that we have in the knowledge base. We have articles, we have downloadable resources. Now we have a course, we have webinars and we have previous recordings of this sessions of Ask the Expert. If you are into webinars, Definitely familytreewebinars.com will have a lot for you. And very soon, we're going to release news about other webinars that are planned for this upcoming month. And they're still going to be totally free to view live. So what are you waiting for? Just go there, register, and enjoy those webinars. And the invitation for all of you to be here, not next week, but the week after that, when we are going to meet again for a 30-minute session with news and good things about my heritage, but more important, answering your questions. What do you need? Just to register into the Zoom session to participate, to open your microphones and voice your questions. And that is exactly the time now. Uh, you already know the drill. It's either you raise your uh, virtual hand or your regular hand, you open your microphone and you ask the question. Charlotte, I see you here first. So how are you? Good. Um, I don't have a membership in my heritage, and I am wanting to upload my um, family tree. So I'm wondering if I can do that without a membership, and if I can, do I have a limit on size? Very good question. So yes, you will need, well, let's define first membership, okay? You need to register. You need to have an account. The account can be totally free. And yes, it will have a limitation, 250 individuals in your family tree. Now, here is the secret, and don't tell anybody. No, I'm sorry, it's the other way. Tell everybody. I'm assuming you have a JetCom, 
in another place, right? You already have yeah. your family tree in another place. So if you export and you bring a JETCOM in, the JETCOM will go up completely, no matter how many people you have in that tree. Now, obviously, again, if you have more than 250, you will not be able to edit them. You will not be able to add more people. It's going to be kind of frozen, okay? But you will receive matches on all of them and you will be able to see all your tree. And only then you decide if you want to become a paid member. And for that, I can already tell you, we have plenty of discounts all the time. Will that answer your question? Perfectly, thank you. Excellent, my pleasure. Uh, so let's see who else has a question. Nobody? No. Come on. You're not going to get make my life that easy. Come on. Don't be shy. If you don't want to show your hands, you can just unmute your microphone. Yes, Charlotte. No well, problem. Well, if to be shy, I'm not shy. So I, I liked your demonstration on the marriage records, but I lost track when you went to what you called, I think you said the new button. Where was that? The new, where you then got some details about hmm. Dave Jansen, not just his marriage, but everything about him. Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, let's see if I can go back here. Um, what I had when I landed here for the first time was a pop-up alerting me about the tabular view right here in the upper kind of right corner. Okay. And this will allow me to see more records per screen. That is the new thing. Is, yeah. is that what you were referring to? No, but as you went on with your demonstration, you picked someone like Jan uh, Jansen. Yeah. And then click something near the top. I thought you called it a new button, but I might have misheard. No, it's, it's just the view. Jan. I said the view record. Like view. The, yeah, view. you don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, my Spanglish. Uh, definitely my accent. Uh, yes, what I'm saying is that you don't need to click exactly on the button. If you click right here on the white space, that will do it. Thank you. Okay, so you don't you don't need to aim to that button. Uh, Harold, how are you? Good to hello, see you. I want to say hello to you too, and I just want to say I hope to see you this summer at the Jewish Genealogy Conference, and you're doing great. And I'm going to renew with your company, too, because I belong to your company. So I hope I get a good. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't belong to us. You're a member of us. Yeah, I'm going to join you. Guys OK, again. we don't own anybody. Last <laughs> I joined last February and I want to. And I'm 66. I hope they give me a good discount. OK, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I plan to attend a few conferences this year and hopefully, yes, they will manage to be in person. Uh, Ken, hi, how are you? Hey, hey Daniel. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, you, you know, there's a lot of other companies out there like Billion Graves. Are, is there going to be more interaction with those kind of companies? I mean, other than the records or the smart matches, um, is there going to be something where, hey, there's there could possibly be uh, a match when you put in a specific date of this person's grave through billion graves. Okay, so specifically with billion graves, we get an update every two months, every three months, I think, of everything new that they have there. Uh, the the way of partnership work in the and that obviously depends on the company. Uh, we we need to get access to their data, and then we have it on the search engine for you to view. And normally we will give you also a link to that website as we do in the in Billion Graves. So more and more records are coming. We are working on new partnerships, but of course it all depends on uh, the different companies and the interest. 
of those companies as well. Got Thank it? Thank you. Okay, pleasure. Uh, Stephen, I see you have a question. Do you want to voice it? Sure. I uh, I was using the, my, the photos section and I was wondering if you can take photos and move them into an album that you've created from the site or if you have to upload them directly into the album. Okay, so the answer is no, you don't need to re-upload the photo. You can just come to any photo that you like. Uh, let me make sure that I have albums created here. So yeah, I have a few albums here. Uh, so let's take this photo, for example, and let me show you how you do that. Um, okay, so first I'm here verifying that this photo is in the album family photos okay uh, so i'm gonna go back because i don't remember if i can do that from here no i need to be here one second we set this picture you see that when i go over in the upper corner of the photo you have this check mark i click uh -huh. on it and i can select multiple ones if i want to okay and then in here, in the right corner, upper right corner, you have more options. And uh -huh. here I will add them to the album. And I will be able to add it to as many albums as I want, uh, one album at a time. So let's say that I want them in this album. I add them and I will select them again because I also want them in the Jansen family album. So now if I will go to the uh, picture as I went before, you will see that now the picture is in three albums. It's in the family Durand, in the family photos and in the Jensen family. All right, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, just make extra sure uh, that you create the album before that, okay? The, that is a must, I don't think uh let me try um yeah from here well you can you could create a new album from here and then automatically move it to that and also very important whenever you are creating a photo album is to decide if you want this album to be public so everybody could see it or you want to keep it private okay thank you very much okay my pleasure uh, Sandy, how Hello are there. you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Um, I have a few of those pesky divorces and so on that I want to follow up on. And I don't have any problems finding the marriages, but how do you arrange your divorces? Are they just mixed in in the records or are there uh, separate divorce files? Well, I would say based on my experience that that really depends on the record holder. Uh, I have seen notes of the divorce as a side note of the marriage. Uh, I have seen just the next page after the marriage, the page for the divorce. So you don't really need to look for it very far. Uh, and sometimes they just have it in a totally different book and it's a totally different set. So you will need to go into that specific. But um, it, it's kind more like depending on the physical of, of how each archive organized their records, because when they are digital and you're looking for a surname or a first name and a surname or a couple, and, and that is also something that you can do on MyHeritage, uh, it, it will be more easy to find for you. Um, if we're already there, just, just let me bring that to your attention. In this case, uh, let's say that I'm looking for James Jansen. And I know that uh, he was uh, spouse of Jen uh, Smith, just for the uh, exercise. So now I am looking only at those James Jansen, Marion, Jan Smith. And you should be able to find if we have the divorce, both the marriages and the divorce right here, one next to the other. Okay, thanks a lot. My pleasure. 
Uh, we still have time for a couple more of questions. Um, I don't know uh, who has any comments, questions. No, that's it. We're going to finish earlier. What a nice present. Okay. Well, guys, uh, if you insist, uh, thank you very much. I allocated half an hour uh, for you, but if you would like less, no problem. Uh, class dismissed. Thank you very much for being here. I look forward to meet you in two more weeks. In the meantime, please take very good care of yourself and your family. Have a lovely Valentine's week and hopefully good luck with your research and the free collections on MyHeritage. Goodbye, everybody.